Films like The Personal History of David Copperfield are so important because they take us on a journey back in time, but they also hold up a mirror to life in the present day. They show us the importance of the value of empathy. Get inside the head and the mind of someone else to see what life is like through their experience. David Copperfield was written in the 1800s and we're still able to connect with these characters. I think well, we've all been stuck inside. The one thing all of us have wanted to do is go outside, is to get out. This film allows you to escape for a couple of hours. It's so important to have that escapism. Uh, the eye has to travel. Stories, they take us out of ourselves. An idea of different possibilities and different worlds. And see life from a completely different perspective. In the name of heaven, said Miss Betsy suddenly, why rookery? Do you mean the house, ma'am? asked my mother. Why rookery? said Miss Betsy. Cookery would have been more to the purpose if you'd had any practical ideas of life, either of you. The name was Mr. Copperfield's choice, returned my mother. When he bought the house, he liked to think that there were rooks about it. The evening wind made such a disturbance just now among some tall old elm trees at the bottom of the garden that neither my mother nor Betsy could forbear glancing that way. As the elms bent to one another, like giants who were whispering secrets. And after a few seconds of such repose, fell into a violent flurry, tossing their wild arms about, as if their late confidences were really too wicked for their peace of mind. Some weather-beaten ragged old rook's nests, burdening their higher branches, swung like wrecks upon a stormy sea. Where are the birds? asked Miss Betsy. Though my mother had been thinking of something else. The rooks, what has become of them? asked Miss Betsy. There have not been any since we have lived here, said my mother. We thought, Mr. Copperfield thought, it was quite a large rookery, but the nests were very old and the birds have deserted them a long while. Mr. Copperfield all over, cries Betsy. David Copperfield from head to foot calls a house a rookery when there's not a rook near it and takes the birds on trust because he sees the nests. David Copperfield, returned my mother, is dead. And if you dare to speak unkindly of him to me, my poor dear mother, I suppose had some momentary intention of committing an assault and battery upon my aunt. Who could easily have settled her with one hand, even if my mother had been in far better training for such an encounter than she was that evening. But it passed with the action of rising from her chair, and she sat down again very meekly and fainted. Whether I turn out to be the hero of my own story, or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these moments must show. This is Crockwood Trosserfield. David Copperfield. Oh. On your head. George! And you'll have quite the ride on the way.